So for the following problem, we're going to solve the system of equations using Gaussian elimination, then compute the sum s is equal to x plus y plus z. So after we solve the system and we get our values on what x, y, and z are equal to, they want us to add x, y, and z together to get this sum here. Okay, so first we need to focus on solving this system. Now, they want us to solve the system using Gaussian elimination. Now, when it comes to sol solving three variable systems like this, there are a couple other ways that you could solve this system. My preferred method of solving systems is I actually use elimination method. It's just kind of what I gravitate towards and how I like to solve these kind of systems. Um, if you're able to use a calculator, if you have a graphing calculator, um, or are able to use a calculator online, um, there are calculators that you can plug these values, you can plug your equations into, and it will help you solve them and spit out the values for x, y, z. Now for this video, we're going to use Gaussian elimination in order to solve this. Now this is somewhat a long process, um, so I'm going to kind of shorthand this a little bit. I'm going to go through all the row um, calculations and everything needed to solve this particular problem. Um, but the first thing that we need to do in order to solve this using Gaussian elimination is we need to get this set up in a proper form. We need to create our matrix for it. All right, so when we create our matrix for it, remember that we are using the coefficients of all of our values. Starting with our first equation, our coefficient, there's a 1. Then we have a negative 3, negative 2, 0. Next equation, 2, negative 7, negative 6, 7. Last equation, 4, 5, 2, and 1. So this is our matrix, and we need to solve this. All right, so if we're trying to solve this using Gaussian elimination, what we're trying to get is we want to get ones all in our diagonals here and everything else essentially equal to zero. So typically we start with trying to get our second and our third rows. We try and get these values here equal to zero. Um, so the first step that we're actually going to do here is we are going to take row 1 and we're going to multiply it by negative 2. So negative 2, I'm sorry, negative 2 row 1 and we're going to add that to row 2. All right, so we're going to take this first row, multiply it by negative 2, and then add it to our second row. Now when we do that, right, so we multiply everything in the top row by negative 2. So that's 1 times negative 2, which is now a negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 is now a 6. This becomes a 4, and this becomes a 0. When we take this and add it to this row here, right, let's see what we get. 2 plus negative 2 is 0. Negative 7 plus 6 is a negative 1. Negative 6 plus 4 is a negative 2. And 7 plus 0 is 7. Everything else stays the same. 1, negative 3, negative 2, 0, 4, 5, 2, and 1. Okay, so that's our first calculation. All right, got us the 0 here in that spot. Our next calculation that we're going to do is we're going to take row 1 and multiply it by negative 4. And then we're going to add that to row 3. All right, so we're going to take row 1, multiply it by negative 4. So if we do that, 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 4 is a positive 12. Negative 2 times negative 4 is 8. And 0 times negative 4 is still a 0. So if we take that and add it to row 3, let's see, let's go ahead and put this over here. Uh, so add that to row 3. 4 plus negative 4 is 0. 5 plus 12 is 17. 2 plus 8 is 10 and 1 plus 0 is 1. Everything else will stay the same, the other two rows. So 1, negative 3, negative 2, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 2, 7. In our next step, I'm just going to take row 2 and multiply it by negative 1. So I just want to change the sign of everything in row 2. So if I do that, I still get a 0, I get a positive 1, a positive 2, and a negative 7 everything else will stay the same. And I'm doing that so that my next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take row 2 and I'm going to multiply it by 3 and add it to row 1. 
x, I'm going to take row 2, multiply it by 3. So when I do that, 0 times 3 is 0, 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. And if we add that to row 1, let's see. 1 plus 0 is 0. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 2 plus 6 is 4. And 0 plus negative 21 is negative 21. And then everything else stays the same. 0, 1, 2, negative 7. 0, 17, 10, 1. So then our next step, what we're going to do is we're going to take row 2 and we're going to multiply it by negative 17 and we're going to add that to row 3 and see what we get. So row 2 times negative 17, when we do that, 0 times negative 17 is still 0. 1 times negative 17 is negative 17. 2 times negative 17 is negative 34. And negative 7 times negative 17 is 119. We're going to add this to row 3. So let's see what we get. 0 plus 0 is 0. 17 plus negative 17 is 0. 10 plus negative 34 is negative 24. And 1 plus 119 is 120. Everything else stays the same. So let's just move all of that over. For our next step, we're actually just going to take row 3 and we are going to multiply that by negative 1 over 24. We're trying to get this negative 24 here and turn it into a 1. So when we do that calculation, we end up with a 0, right? So 0 times anything is 0. 0 times anything is 0. Negative 24 times the negative 1 over 24 is a 1. And 120 times the negative 1 over 24 is actually a 5. Everything else stays the same. So let's drop all of that over. We're almost getting there. Our next step, we're going to take row 3 and multiply it by negative 4. And we are going to add that to row 1. And when we do that, we get a 1, 0, 0, negative 1 for our first row. And everything else stays the same. So 0, 0, 1, negative 5 which is going to bring us to our, one of our last steps here. We're going to take row 3 and multiply it by negative 2, and we're going to add that to row 2. All right, so row 3, multiply this by negative 2, and add it to our row 2 here. And when we do that, for our row 2, we end up with a 0, 1, 0, 3. Everything else stays the same. So. This last matrix that we have here, so we need to keep in mind what this represents, right? Our first column is our X values. Our second column is our Y. Our third column is our Z. And then our last column is what they're equal to. So if we take a look at our first column here, I'm sorry, our first row, we actually have just one X is equal to negative one. That actually tells us that x is equal to negative 1. Our second row, we only have a 1 here in the y position. So this here actually represents that y is equal to 3. So we know what y is equal to. And in our third row, we have here a 1, and that's where z is represented. So that tells us that z is equal to negative 5. So these actually are our three solutions for this system of equations. So x is negative 1, y is 3, 0 is equal to negative 5. Going back up to instructions, remember that they wanted us to compute the sum of this. They wanted us to take that s is equal to x plus y plus z. So if we add all of those together, negative 1 plus 3 plus negative 5, negative 1 plus 3 is 2, 2 plus negative 5 is a negative 3. So that is what S is equal to for this particular problem. Otherwise, that's it for this video.